Hello and thank you for joining me today here on Christ Connection Ministries International. I am Frank Blaylock, your host. I want to encourage you today as an entrepreneur, as a business person, and even a young person considering going into business for yourself. I want you to understand the Word of God backs you up fully as a businessman. I understand there are those of the very negative mindset who feel that if you're in business, how can you serve God? In fact, I was on a bus in China one time when they discovered I was a businessman. One asked me, how can you be a Christian if you're a businessman? Because they were not aware of the principles of the Word of God that dictate how business is to be conducted. They looked around them, looked at this guy, that guy, and said, he's so corrupt, but God gives us a good pattern of doing business. That's how I want to encourage you today. To do that, I want to go to Jeremiah chapter 17, and I want to share with you verses 7 through 8. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see heat when it cometh. But her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Does that sound like a good business model? It's a good life model, isn't it? To know that you can live a life that is fruitful. If trouble comes, you're not bothered by it because you put deep roots down and you know you'll overcome the drought and you'll keep on producing fruit season after season. Let me say this. Blessed, happy, joyful, content, and peaceful is the man who has the Lord at his right hand. For this man shall be safe, shall be saved when the storm comes. This man shall not fear, nor shall he be made afraid. For the Lord his God is with him as a strong, mighty one. This man, this businessman, you, business or not, will not be moved or dislodged from your place because you are rooted and grounded in what? You're grounded in the Word. You're grounded in the water of the Word. So your root of your spirit man taps into something deeper than what you are yourself. For the Word was made flesh and came and dwelt among us. So this is the Word I'm talking about that you're grounded in. You're grounded in Christ. You have the mind of Christ, so you think differently than those out there in the world. They may say you are peculiar. Well, peculiar means a prized possession, something very unique. So I'm okay with being peculiar, aren't you? Especially when that puts you above all the other situations in life where others are struggling with. The Lord will say this to you. Trust my word for acceleration. Have you received a word where the Lord has said, I'm going to accelerate your business? Trust that word. Hold on to that word. It may look like you're slowing down, but don't give up on your word because that's going to be the fuel that will accelerate you at the particular time of God's plan and of God's choosing. Hebrews 10 and 35 sums it like this. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. Don't stop believing. If your promise was three years ago, five years ago, ten years ago, hold on to the word of God. Cast not away your confidence because it will come with its reward. Do you not know the Lord would say, how fast I can move when I change gears? 
You remember, I do, when you were kids, when you were driving the old stick shift, man, if you switched gears just right, you could really make that car do something. God says you haven't seen anything yet. I'm about to change gears and things are going to accelerate like you never believed could even happen. Do not say, Lord, I don't have the horsepower I need. He's all the horsepower you need. He's all the angel power you need. He's all the God power that you need today. The Lord will say this, you don't think you've got enough horsepower? You don't think you can do it? If I just took my finger, God says, and pushed, you'd be going so fast you couldn't, you couldn't even hang on. Uh, you would be just hanging on for your dear life like on a roller coaster ride, which are, shoo, shoo, wow, I just, oh, you're just screaming right at the top of your lungs. And I don't do much roller coaster riding myself, too much for me, but God says if I just pushed you, you'd go so fast you would feel like you were losing control. I may do, he says, many things by natural law, but remember, I made the natural law for a purpose, the purpose to give stability so you could take certain actions and be confident of certain outcomes. You would know because of the laws of gravity, for example, how they work, that if you take certain actions, you're going to get the result the same every time. So don't leap off any buildings unless you've got certain kind of anti-gravity equipment that would keep you from hitting the ground hard. So God says, I made laws and I made them for a purpose. But he said, I have indeed arranged for you to have certain incomes. Have you ever heard God say in the word? Verily, verily. He's emphasizing. He's saying it twice. He's trying to make you uh, grasp the seriousness of what he's saying. He says, certain outcomes I will give you, but remember this too. I am able to manipulate the natural law to give you a supernatural advantage. I could digress here and just go all into all kind of uh, rabbit trails perhaps of how God suspends natural law to move you through even space and time or to get you into certain situations on time, but we'll save that maybe for another day. Indeed, he can get you to a place quicker than you thought you could because of the supernatural insertion of his power where he is able to take time and, and maneuver it for your advantage. Did not his disciples experience this? They were in the boat. Uh, the storm had been there. Christ stepped into the boat, and it says, and then they were to the land. So like, pow, like that. They were, had been in a storm. Christ gets in. The storm is gone. And then, wow, here's the land. We're already there. How did that happen? supernatural manipulation of the law of speed and time and in time pushed them forward in time and got them to the shore quicker than their regular boat or ship would have gotten them there. I can and will manipulate time for you, says the Lord. Did I not even tell you in my word, redeem the time? because I want you to regain possession of it. Time is very important. And in normal circumstances, when time is gone, it's gone forever. But we know according to the scripture that for uh, Hezekiah, I think it was, God moved the sun back by a certain number of degrees. He manipulated time. We know when, I think it was, Joshua was fighting the battles that God caused the heavenly bodies to just hold still so the sun didn't go down like it normally would until the battle could be won. God wants you to regain possession of time, to take action that will set in motion a chain of events that will compensate you for the losses you have suffered. Do you feel like you would think that you had redeemed time if you'd suffer a great business loss? And yet five years later, 
you regain 20 times what your loss was in a day. Wouldn't that feel a little bit like God had redeemed time for you? God made it up to you. God gave you back what should have been yours that entire five-year period of time. To redeem means to buy these things back by your faith and by your actions. See, faith never works in solitary fashion. Faith always grabs a hold of some effort, some work on our part, so that by faith working with our works, we're able to accomplish extraordinary things that couldn't happen in just the natural way of doing things. But I want to go even beyond this point. I want you to understand, the Lord says, that I want you to have the full possession of the inheritance that I've given you. God is very much into inheritance, friend. God wants you to leave something to your kids, and kids, he wants you to get something, and he wants you to leave something to your children. He wants generational wealth to pass from one generation of the godly to another generation. So God's very much interested in you possessing your inheritance. Not that which is necessarily passed down from your earthly father, but that that is passed down from your heavenly father. Your earthly father may have left you nothing. He may have left you some debts. But God says, if I get in your business, I can change things around in such a way that I will give you great wealth that comes from heaven. Let me be your inheritance, says the Lord, and I will give you everything you need to live good and successful in life. I want you to take full possession of the title deed of the land that I've given you, says the Lord. I want you to see the borders that I've dictated. You know, sometimes we think our business is right here. We think it covers one or two counties. Maybe it covers a city. Maybe it covers a state. And you can see that, but I want you to look right now at maybe God's borders that he has drawn for your business where yours are here, here's are right there. His is right here. Why? Why do you want to see this out here? Because now you want to take your borders that you see and you want to begin to stretch them out. Push them over there to fit. Push there to fit. Pull back over here until now you are occupying the full inheritance that God has dictated for you. He says, I tell you that you will indeed inherit the land. You will dwell in it and you will eat the fat of the land. He says, I've given you the mountains for your protection and I've given you a position of dominance in the marketplace. I've given you springs of water for the sustaining of life. If you serve God and you are in business with God, when the land is dry, somehow God will send water to you. He will send a contract to you. Yes, you may face times that you wonder, well, where is God? You keep praying, you keep believing, you keep trusting because all this time you're praying, believing, and trusting God is working even when you don't see Him. And then just all of, that, all of a sudden, God shows up and it's done. And it wasn't by just chance. It's all that prayer and all that faith and all that trusting that pushed your miracle right up in your face where you could see it. Indeed, he says, will I not even give to you the heathen who will serve you? Wow. He said of Israel, I'm going to bring the heathen. I'm going to bring kings. I'm going to bring the wealthy. They will come and bring their treasures. They will bring their wealth. They will hew your wood. They will, they will carry your water for you. I'm going to give you the life of the blessed if you serve me. You know, God is saying the same thing for you today, that he will give you the riches of the marketplace. Even of the heathen, even of those of other countries, even of those who don't know God, God can put money in your bank account 
from the most wicked man in the world because in you he found somebody trustworthy to do business with. Do you know that even those who are corrupt don't want to do business with corrupt people, right? They're looking honest people. You be honest. You be trustworthy in God. He'll bring you the clients you need to give you your full inheritance. And they will say to you even, let us go up with you to the mountain of the Lord, for we have heard how your God has blessed you. There'll be no greater day for you than for your clients to come in and say, I want to know about your God. I see you are blessed. I want to hear your story because I know you must have a relationship that is with God, and I want to hear about that. But even though they may be the heathen, treat them as your brothers. Turn them into your brothers because we're trying to bring a tribe of people through the earth, other business people doing exploits for God in the earth. God can turn these people into collaborators, into architects and designers to cause your business to flourish. Let God bring you key people, key cl clients that will accelerate, will be the actually the agent of God's acceleration for you in the earth. But know your own heart. Know your own heart. Be true with your heart. Give thought to the dreams I put in you, says the Lord. Revisit the visions that I have given to you. Take a closer look at the dreams and the visions. And when you look at them and look at the mysteries, you'll see that I tucked inside of them an instruction. See, anytime God gives a vision or reveals a mystery, he hides in it nuggets of instruction because there, are, there will always be things you need to do to inherit your promise. You will see the key that unlocks the door that God has before you. He says, even ask of me and I will show you more than you already are looking at. For indeed, I have given you eyes to see. I've given you ears to hear. I've even given your mouth to speak and decree and declare. I am the blessed of the Lord. I am prosperous of God. I have new business today. I win major contracts today. I have the favor of God. I have the favor of man. No weapon formed against me can prosper. I am above only and not beneath. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the lender and not the borrower. And a thousand other declarations you can speak over yourself and your business every day because the secret of your success is right here in your mouth. What you say, what you proclaim, and what you then, how you take those words and back them up with actions that God reveals for you to take. The Lord will say this, I'm sanctifying your methods. I am putting an edge on your axe and your sword. I've whetted both of them, he says. Indeed, then use your tools, but keep your sword always close at hand. We know in, I think it was Nehemiah's day, right? When they were rebuilding the walls of the temple, they kept the sword in one hand and they kept a tool in the other. They worked, but they stayed vigilant. In business, you have to work, but you have to be vigilant. You cannot be gullible. You cannot just assume someone's honest. You cannot just assume the offer is real. Go to God. Take the sword of the word. Read it. See what God is saying, because God will reveal to you the hearts of those who endeavor to do business with you. When you hold the sword, it'll be a warning to those who would dare harm you. When you hold the sword, you can fight back the falsehood and the things that are not for your good, but are trying to destroy you. Indeed, the Lord says, I will fight for you. So give due diligence to the things at hand, for I will cause them to prosper in your hands, says the Lord and they shall suddenly spring forth. Let me share this one last story with you. 
I had a vision a number of years ago where I was reaching down to pick something up and then suddenly there grew up right in front of me this beautiful tropical plant from nothing to here on up above my head. And what was so amazing, already that fast at the bottom of that tropical plant, there was already fruit hanging for the taking. I believe there's a time in my life that God is going to favor me that before I can even reach my hand to do it, it's going to happen like that, and I'm going to be the recipient of God's blessing. And I decree the same for you as you serve God, that there will be moments that you will reach to take an action, and you will have supernatural results and fruit immediately without even taking any effort. God bless you. Have a great day in the Lord today.